What's up? It's Fern. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. So today I'm going to be talking all about my philodendron Milanochrysum, which is my baby. This is one of my favorite plants in my collection. So I'm really excited to just talk about it a little bit. This is going to be more of like a laid back like care video. I don't even know if I'm gonna call it that. Um, I just kind of want to talk about this plant, talk about my journey with it, my experience, and yeah, how I take care of it as well. So um, it's not gonna be like super structured or formal. We're just gonna hang out and admire this beautiful plant. So let's do that first, actually. Let's just admire it. So this is my favorite leaf on it right now. It is its second newest leaf, and it's the first one that's come out and had that, you know, like more elongated, uh, typical Milano Chrysum look to it and then this is the newest newest leaf that is just finishing unfurling right now it still has kind of that like ready orange look to it so pretty so I guess I'll talk a little bit about when I got this plant and um, just like the beginning of getting it so I actually checked and I got this plant uh, in the beginning of June of last year. So I've had it for about nine months. I was actually super lucky and bought it from one of my plant friends here, Vanessa. So I didn't have to order it online and ship it or anything. So sorry, I don't have like a link of somewhere um, where you can get one as well. I was just lucky to um, find it locally. Check Facebook, you guys. You can find amazing plants locally on Facebook. Join all the plant groups. So I got him when he was just a little baby. That is like one of the original <laughs> leaves that he had. I just watered him. So if he looks a little bit thirsty, that's why um, when he gets thirsty, his, his leaves can curl a little bit like that. So that's why he looks like that. But his leaves were just little like that. When these are juvenile, they look very similar to philodendron micans. And I actually had a lot of people try to tell me that this was a micans, but it's not. It's a it's just a, a young Milano Chrysum. So um, yeah, that's basically what it looked like. And since then, this plant has just grown like crazy. This is one of my fastest growing plants in the sense that it is always working on a new leaf. Honestly, as soon as it puts out one, it will be working on another one. I can already see a bump like where a new one is gonna emerge off of that new one there. So I would say that this is definitely a plant that you can get away with buying as like juvenile or a cutting or something because first of all, it grows really fast. Second of all, it's just like a joy to watch it grow. And yeah, you can, I don't know, save some money and it's fun to just watch it grow up. So those were our humble beginnings. And I guess I'll talk a little bit about how I've cared for it. This thing has been relatively low maintenance and pretty easy for me. I have heard of people really struggling with them. So I don't want to call it easy, but just in my experience, I've had a pretty easy time with it. Um, I will say that the one thing that it is picky about in my experience, I need to like do disclaimers on everything that this is just my experience because people come after me. Um, you know, it's different conditions in everybody's home or plants are going to need different things. But in my experience, this plant um, needs quite high humidity, especially when it's putting out new leaves. Um, the leaves are really prone to getting stuck like a lot of philodendrons do that like weird like inchworm thing and they don't want to come out um, This plant is really prone to that and it needs humidity to just kind of like come out undamaged um, There are some leaves like that leaf right there has some damage um, from when it was coming out You can see that it I believe that that one was stuck and just had a lot of trouble getting out but if the humidity is high or if you missed the leaf, when I see them get stuck, I will miss them like a couple of times a day and it really helps to like lubricate it, I guess, and they can come free. But in my experience, the higher the humidity, the less chance that the leaf is going to come out damaged or get stuck. So I would definitely keep that in mind. Mine actually lives right beside my humidifier um, just so that I know it's, you know, getting good humidity. <laughs> As for lighting, I have always grown this plant under grow light, so I've always had it in like a controlled environment, I guess you could say. And so it's basically always received like, I would say medium 
light from my grow lights because I've always had it kind of pulled away from them. Like for example, right now it lives on the floor so it receives light from my Mars Hydro grow light but the, the grow light's like way at the top of my plant shelf. So if you guys grow these plants at home in natural light, I would love to hear what kind of light you give yours. Um, like what way your window's facing and um, just kind of what type of lighting I guess throughout the day because I've only ever used a grow light. Um, but I've had good luck with a grow light with this guy. So I'm just gonna keep doing that for now. And as you can see, I do have it in a clear orchid pot, which I kind of regret putting it in this pot because it's so lightweight that it always just wants to tip over with the moss pole in it. Um, so in the spring or the summer, I will probably be repotting this into terracotta. It does have some crystals in there to kind of weigh it down, but it's still like very, very unstable. However, it is nice to be able to monitor the roots. I can see a few of its roots on the outside of the plastic and it actually has a couple poking out down below. So, and it's just in my, you know, my classic mix that I use for almost everything, which is orchid bark, charcoal, pumice, perlite, and coco coir. Um, just a light fluffy mix that allows for good drainage because I do let this plant pretty much entirely dry out before I give it a water. I wait till the, soil is pretty much bone dry and then I drench it in the shower. <laughs> I do water this plant in my shower because I use the shower to wet the moss pole. With my watering I do fertilize pretty much every time just because this plant is honestly always growing. So I do a light fertilization. I usually dilute it to half of what it says on the bottle. So I um, pour the fertilizer in, turn the shower on, wet the moss pole, and then I put some more fertilizer water in like the, the soil um, just to like make sure it really gets in there. And then lately I've actually been putting some of the fertilizer water on the moss pole, like pouring it on a little bit just to make sure it's really drenched and maybe to add some nutrients. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing to do. I honestly like just started trying it out recently, so hopefully that's not bad, but... <laughs> That's what I've been doing. I like my thought process was that maybe it would help the aerial roots to cling on to it. But anyways, um, what I wanted to say about this moss pole is that people ask me all the time how I keep my moss poles moist. Um, do I spray them every day, etc. And my answer is that unfortunately I do not. I am a really lazy plant parent slash moss pole keeper. <laughs> I pretty much only wet them when I water the plant, so it gets very dry and crispy. However, I have not noticed this negatively impacting like the plant's ability to cling onto it, to grow its aerial roots through it, and to climb. Um, this plant actually does have aerial roots rooted into it, and it doesn't seem to mind when the moss goes dry. I don't know, maybe that's like... I'm not giving the advice to not keep your moss poles moist because it's probably a lot better if you do. But I'm just I'm just telling you what I do and I'm lazy with it. I want to get one of those like electric misters um, off of Amazon and I can just like shh, maybe then it will be easy and it will inspire me to keep my moss poles moist. I don't know. But this is just what I've done and this is actually two moss poles attached onto here because it so quickly grew out the first one. Um, my friend Courtney actually made the first one and sent it to me which was so nice and I was so excited to get this plant onto a pole. Um, I probably put it on this pole like around its, I don't know, fifth leaf or something like maybe, maybe there. Um, yeah, so it outgrew it quite quickly. I added the new one. And all I did was zip tie it on. I just left a portion of the mesh without any moss and slipped it over top like encasing the existing pole and then zip tied it on. So nothing fancy. And then I just secure it with the green garden tape that you can see, which you can buy at pretty much any garden center or plant shop. And um, yeah, now it's heavily climbing this moss pole and I think that's why it started giving me these more elongated leaves like you can see right there. So I'm just so excited to see this plant grow, you guys. I don't have anything to say about propagation because I actually have never propagated this plant. Um, I'm assuming it's pretty straightforward because most philodendron are pretty straightforward to um, propagate. So I'll probably film if and when I do that. Um, but I've just been enjoying this plant so much, you guys. Honestly, it's just so beautiful with its dark velvety leaves. I am obsessed and it's just so fun to watch grow. Oh, I guess last thing, I also haven't really had any problems with, with pests um, on this plant. I did have one point where I thought it maybe had spider mites. 
Um, I kind of like think that about all my plants sometimes and sometimes they don't, <laughs> sometimes they do. I'm just like paranoid. But I did give it a treatment with neem oil then and there's some like neem oil chunks that are still on some of the leaves um, just because I didn't like do a good job of diluting it and emulsifying it. Um, so that's what some of like the streaks on the leaves are. But uh, ever since I did that, I have not seen any sign of spider mites or pests at all. So I mean, it's probably like the classic pests that you want to watch out with with these like spider mite and thrips. So so I just I just keep a close eye. So yeah, that's basically all I have to say. I just wanted to talk about this plant, show it off a little bit because it is one of my favorites and I do have some people ask how I take care of it. So I thought I would just make a quick little video about it. I am probably going to make like a, a series of these just like laid back, like specific, like plant specific videos. Um, I'm definitely going to do my Alocasia stingray and my philodendron silver sword and just talk about those a little bit give you guys kind of like a background of when i got them and and like how the care experience has been um so if there's any plants besides those ones that you want me to do then just leave them down below in the comments and i will feature them in the video um yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to, don't why do i every time i try to do my outro it just like it gets messed up every time don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Check out my Patreon if you're interested in bonus content. And I will see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye!